My personal favorite is Tesla Model X. I saw it in 2019. I don't own a Tesla car, but I have drove one. And to be true, it was a self-driving car. I was immediately amazed to see where technology has taken us. I'm quite sure those of you who have seen what a Tesla car can do are also an optimistic person like me. At least we can confidently say future is EV. Today I'm going to talk about is India ready for an EV revolution? In about 10 years, Tesla has ascended to turn into the greatest name in the EV business today. With eco-friendly family vehicles that can dominate sports cars and even supercars, Tesla appealed to both devotees and environment conscious. The Indian market has been trusting that the brand will offer its models here too. Indeed, the Union Minister of Road Transports and Highways and Minister of MSMEs Nitin Gadkari reported that Tesla will begin operations in India somewhere in mid-2021. A previous tweet from Tesla CEO Elon Musk in October had also indicated this improvement. The US-based car maker concentrates solely on electrified mobility with a scope of premium and extra wagons models that offers a mix of performance and range. Four models are now underway. Tesla is probably going to enter the market with its first mass market offering, the Model 3. American electric car maker Tesla had added another quill to its cap with the National Highway Traffic Safety Association granting its 2021 model Y SUV an ideal 5-star security rating. The NHTSA is the head organization in the US that oversees vehicle guidelines and award crash test appraisals to the various vehicles at a bargain in the US market. The safety rating depends on the performance of the vehicle in a front-tail accident test, side accident test, a rollover test, and the security highlights. Another interviewing thing to note here is that the Model Y's well-being rating is appropriate across all variations of the SUV. That is not normal for the regular global NCAP crash test. which frequently test a specific variation of a vehicle. Tesla is viewed as perhaps the most optimistic brand across the globe. And the development of its auxiliaries is very huge for India's economy and its early EV industry as well. This can be inflection point for electric versatility in India and might persuade numerous customers to think about purchasing an EV later on. Likewise, an investment from Tesla may persuade other vehicle makers and their segment providers to put resources into India for the advancement of EV and related parts. Now the question lies, how costly are electric vehicles? Buying an electric vehicle isn't cheap and the reason is because of the battery. The battery itself can give a cost of 1000 euros. Shocking, isn't it? But why are these batteries so costly? See, when an electric vehicle uses the same rechargeable lithium ion batteries which we use in our laptops or mobile phones, the only difference is that the one in the vehicle is bigger compared to the phones. Thus delivering far more energy the most expensive component in each of these cells is the cathode, which stores and releases the energy. Now you would ask, what does this cathode contain? Cathodes are made of metals like cobalt, lithium, nickel and manganese which are mined and converted into high-purity compounds. According to Bloomberg report, on an average, the current cost of a lithium-ion EV battery is $7,300. Currently, the majority of the batteries are being produced in China. 
whereas Europe is trying to build out new factories in cell manufacturing. Then why do some EV vehicles cost less than 15 lakhs, whereas others are more than 20 lakhs in India? The reason for that is because some of the cars are entirely built outside whereas some are only assembled in India. That is where you need to understand the terms CKD and CBU. Let me explain what these terms mean. CKD refers to all those cars which are completely knocked out, meaning they are assembled in the country locally. The parts of the car like engines and batteries are imported from outside and are assembled in the local country. Now when it comes to CBU, which means completely built up cars are fully assembled outside the country itself. The entire vehicle is imported to the local country. Also, the import duty for the CBU car on an average is 50%, whereas for a completely knocked down car is 30%. The 20% difference plays a major role in the final price of the car. Let me simplify it for you further. Let's take the example of two popular electric vehicles in India, MG ZS and Hyundai Kona. The starting price for MG ZS is 20,88,000, whereas for Hyundai Kona, it's 23,7,000. So both the compact SUVs are priced differently because Hyundai Kona is fully built and formed outside India. So they have to pay much higher import taxes. Whereas for MG ZS, the parts of the car have been imported, but it is assembled in India. So the import taxes for this car is comparatively less. That is why you find the difference of around 2 lakhs, which is a very huge amount for a common middle class Indian, right? Let's take a look at what the common people have to say about the pricing and the upcoming EV revolution. India is all set to turn to electric vehicles to beat pollution. But there are many challenges and barriers India is going to face in the journey to go electric and to follow the low carbon footsteps that are being taken by global biggies. I think that you know any company which is coming to India, the major point is that they have to adapt Indianization. Like if you remember when McDonald's entered India, they had to come up with Alu Tikki just to you know just change their whole concept because they have to come up with Indianization. So I feel yes, Tesla has to be ready for what our roads are all about, our sprees, how we drive, because India is quite different in that way. So yes, I feel that yes, in another five years, yes, the future is electric. But right now, I feel there are a lot of other things which we should concentrate on. Uh, looking at the past, like India has never been ready for the new things, but yeah, it's again a uh, warmly welcoming com uh, country. So it accepts new things very fastly. The second thing is that uh, Tesla is coming to India, but uh, they will need to modify lots and lots of things so that they can sustain in the country. Plus, there have been lots of incidences where we have accepted all the new technologies. I believe, yeah, India would be able to accept it once Tesla starts to grow according to the Indian environment. Uh, I feel that the time where uh, e-vehicles take over India, I think there's a long way to go till then. Because uh, right now there are more important things where the government should focus, like building infrastructure for medical facilities or education. I think that's that should be the focus point right now. You know, uh, it's not everyone's uh, cup of tea to purchase that kind of vehicle. Also, there are a lot of uh, security threats as well because there would be charging stations and you need extra uh, precautions to you know manage such kind of charging stations. Because in India, you know, uh, there are things which turn out to be uh, quite, uh, you know, phenomenal when it comes to security. Uh, yeah, I think that uh, e-vehicles would be definitely a future in India because, you know, as we see that the pollution levels every day is increasing. Uh, most of the cities are having very high pollution index. So if we have e-vehicles coming up in India, that will definitely reduce the pollution index and will become a better place for people to live around. Uh, right now, I would say we are not ready for it, but we are moving towards it as uh, there are a lot of things that we are not ready for, like the uh, power chargers or the ACDC units and how much they can cover or where the charging units should be or not. But talking about pollution, it would be a very great uh, step for India. 
the creation of EVs for India's drivers and riders is a lost cause unless there is access to charging infrastructure. The manufacturing ecosystem is a different aspect that needs to be clear. There is a big problem with supporting the supply chain. Also, there is a need of having a supportive government policy that is technologically sceptical. We should have a complete foolproof plan of financial support for businesses to bring consistency in the tax levied on EVs and batteries. There is a need to have a high cost and value on product and services to its users. In the scenario of subsidies, affordability is affordable by other countries but in the case of the Indian market which cannot afford subsidies due to the sheer scale of the industry unlike other countries. Now, let's see from the user's perspective. There are four major hindrances. Long charging time, range annexity, the high upfront cost of EVs and lack of charging infrastructure. India and Indians, being a very price conscious market, would shift to electric mobility only if it finds it to be as cost effective and convenient as the current system of ICE or internal combustion engine vehicles. Meanwhile, there are strategies like detaching the battery from the EVs, thus lowering the vehicle cost significantly and using a smaller swappable battery. This is a solution that offers batteries with infrastructure as a service on a pay-as-you-go model. Similar to the refueling ecosystem of ICE vehicles or set a charging station everywhere which requires a huge infrastructure. Also it needs a huge cost for developing the station. So before implementing the e-vehicle, India should develop a full-fledged strategy to make it successful. Is India really ready for all this? Well, that is a tough question to answer. India being a developing country and it is said that we need to have electric vehicle for our development but are we really ready? From the excitement of coming such a development in our country to analyzing the hurdles which are also ready to come between the upcoming success. What will happen next? Are the Indian ready to adapt electric vehicles with its pickup speed, short time driving range and longer rechargeable time? Will India see a pollution-free environment by dealing smoothly with the challenges or will Tesla fail?